All right, then, my friends. So now the next thing I want to do is create pages for signing up and logging in. So we have forms on those pages. We're not going to hook up all the functionality right now. We're just creating the templates and kind of tracking what a user types into those forms. And then later on, we'll hook this up with the back end by sending the requests. So let's go to pages, first of all, and create a new file. I'm going to call this signup.js. OK, so right here, we need to, first of all, create this component. So sign up, set that equal to a function. And inside this function, we're going to use use state to keep track of what a user types into the different input fields for the email and the password. So I'll say const and then email and set email right here to update that value. And we set that equal to use state like so and invoke it. And the initial value for this is going to be an empty string. Now, because we're using this hook, we need to import it from React itself. So import use state from React. OK, so the next thing we need is some state for the password. So let's copy that and change this to password and change this to set password. All right, so now we need to return a template. Now, this is going to basically be a form. So let me create that, get rid of the action. We don't need that. And we'll also give this a class name so we can style it later on. So we'll set that equal to sign up. And then also inside this form, we want an on submit handler. Now, I'll come back to that later on. We'll create a function for this later. So inside the form, we'll do an H3 and it will say sign up. And then below that, we need our different fields. Now, we need one for the email and also one for the password. So let's do a label, first of all, for the email. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'll say email right here. And then below that, I'm going to do an input field. Now, the type is going to be email. And in fact, I'm going to scoot these onto separate lines so it doesn't go way over yonder across the screen. So the type is going to be email. And then we also need an on change handler because when the value of this changes, we want to update the email state up here. So we fire a function where we take in the event object when there's a change. And then inside that function, we can set the email and we want to set it equal to whatever the current value is inside the input. And we can get that by saying e dot target, which is this particular element right here dot value. So every time a user types something into here or deletes a letter, we're updating our email state over here to match it. And also to have the two-way data binding, if we change this from outside of the input, we want it to reflect that change in here. We can do that by saying value is equal to the email state up here. All right, so that's the email. And what I'm going to do is actually copy this and paste it down here again, because we need one for password now. So password, the type is password as well, so that it's hidden with those little black dots. And then right here, we need to change this to password or set password, and then this one to password as well for that two-way data binding. And then finally, we need a button down here that is going to say sign up. Now, when we click on this button, it's going to fire a submit event on the form. So when we do that, we can handle that on submit event inside here by referencing a function. Now, I'll call it handle submit. And then we need to create a function called handle submit right here. So const handle submit is equal to a function. And in fact, it's going to be an async function because later on, we're going to make a request to the back end. So inside here, we can take in the event object from the submit event. Now, when we submit a form, the default behavior is to refresh the page in a browser. So we want to prevent that by saying e.prevent default like so. And then after that, I'm just going to console.log the email and the password. All right, cool. So that's the sign up page pretty much done. And then at the bottom, actually, we have to export this. So export default sign up like so. All right, so let me save that. And I'm going to copy all of that to create a new page called login.js. And inside here, I'm going to paste it all. And I just need to change a few things. So this is going to be login. The two pieces of state are going to be the same. This is all going to be the same. We'll change the class of this to login. And then right here, we'll say 
log in as well. The email input is the same, the password is the same. We'll change this to login. And then at the bottom, export default login, which is this component right here. Okay, so we have those two components now, two forms which are almost identical. Now what we need to do is register routes for both of those forms. Okay, so to set up those routes, we need to go to our root component where we have the browser router. We have one route at the minute just for the home page, and we need to import the two pages we just created. So import login from pages login and sign up from pages sign up. So now down here, we can create two more pages, two more routes. So I'm going to copy this and paste it down here. This time the path is going to be forward slash login and it's going to be the login component we want to render and then another one down here forward slash sign up and then it's going to be the sign up component and that's pretty much all we need to do to register those routes. Now there is one more thing I want to do and that's just to update the navbar component that we already have over here to have those links inside them. So what I'll do is down below this link right here, I'm gonna create a nav tag. And inside this nav tag, I'll do a div. And then inside this div, I'll do a link. And we imported that up here. And this link is gonna to go to forward slash login. Like so. And we'll say login right here. And then let's duplicate this to sign up. And sign up like so. So now we have two links as well in the nav bar. When we click on this, it's gonna show us the login page. When we click on this, it's gonna show us the sign up page because these routes right here match the routes that we created right here. All right, so I think that's all right. Let's make sure this is all running over here. Yep, so now let's try this out in a browser. All right, so now we can see the login and the sign up links over here. If I go to login, we can see that form. If I go to sign up, we can see that form as well. Awesome. Now, what I do want to do is just add a little bit of CSS to make this look a tad better. So then let's open up index.css and scroll all right to the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is just copy and paste these styles from my repo. And you can get all of those to remember from the GitHub repo over here. So let me paste them in like so. So for the nav, we say display as flex and align items as center. The anchor tags inside the nav, we say margin left is 10 pixels, just to spread out those links a little bit. And then for the auth form, sign up and login, the max width is 400 pixels, so they don't go all the way across the page. Margin 40 pixels, top and bottom, auto left and right to centralize the form. Padding 20 pixels, a background of white and a border radius of four pixels. So hopefully this is gonna look a bit better. All right, and over in the browser, it does look a lot better. Now, I just wanna test out the functionality by opening up the console, because remember, we log out the user details that we type in here when we click on login or sign up. So let's say right here, mario at net ninja dev, and then test one, two, three, four, whatever, uh, login, and we can see those details right here. If we go to sign up and do the same, I'll say Yoshi this time, Yoshi at net ninja, dev and then abc abc one two three exclamation sign up we can see those things right here so this is all working and by the way from the last lesson i forgot to show you we have this auth context state object right here remember and the user is currently null so the idea is now that once we hook this up with the back end we are going to send that login or sign up request get the token back and then update this auth context state to say, look, now we have a user. We're logged in with this token. So we're gonna start that process in the next lesson by making a sign up hook.